Hello guys, how are you? Uh, I hope you guys are doing well and okay. This is our second session that I've promised that I will be uh, going through the other component of gross income that we did not touch earlier. Now on this session, we will look at the uh, uh, component that deals with uh, our revenue versus our capital. So. Uh, it's a very important component that deals with the receipts and accrual that are revenue in nature and those that are capital in nature. Now, the first case that I want us to discuss and look at is the case of our FISA case where we looked at the analogy or where we will be discussing the analogy of our tree uh, versus our uh, fruit. Okay. Now, under our, our FISA case, we are saying that the income is what is produced by capital as opposed to our principal or the fruit itself. So uh, when we're dealing with the concept of uh, the analogy of tree versus the fruit, uh, the example here that uh, is, is good to make is that of an income that is uh, or the amount that is invested in the bank account, it will give rise to an interest. The interest is considered to be a fruit and the investment in itself in a bank is considered to be uh, the capital. Okay, then the next case that we need to look at is that of our George Forest team, but let's apply the concepts of our fixed and our floating capital. Now, fixed capital, uh, it's basically the capital that's acquired with an intention to keep, uh, and then the floating capital are those assets that are acquired with the intention uh, to basically uh, 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 dispose, for example, trading stock, okay? Now, the fixed capital, when the, 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 there is a decision that arises to dispose the fixed capital, uh, the profit that will arise from disposing the fixed capital will be classified as the, the capital profit. However, in terms of our floating capital, when a floating capital or when trading stock is disposed, the profit that will arise from that will be uh, 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 um, recognized as revenue and will be included in the uh, taxpayers' gross income. So this case then that dealt with this concept of the general guideline that uh, when the, the, the fixed capital is, is basically disposed, it's proceed uh, uh, capital in nature, and the when the floating capital is disposed, it proceed is class is as 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 as, as, as uh, treated as revenue and is included in gross income. Is the case of our George Forest Timber, which is a very very important case and that you need to take into consideration when we are looking at the the the, the, the contents of our, our, our revenue versus capital okay now we also need to look at the case of our starts versus our CIR where we look at an intention being an important factor unless some other intervening factor may uh, uh, provide evidence to prove that when a, an, an article was sold the taxpayer was in pursuance of a profit making scam then such a, 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 a disposal on the receipt that will arise then would be capital so if there is some uh, indication that when an article is disposed that the taxpayer is in fact uh, involved in a profit making scam of such uh, then when an article then is disposed we will classify those as a, a revenue receipt and will be included in our gross income so here we are saying that the intention of the taxpayer uh, at the point when an article it is, is disposed it is very important uh, and you need to look at the original intention as well as any subsequent change in the intention of the taxpayer. Now, our start case also then uh, uh, discuss or deals with a very important uh, concept of realizing a capital asset as the best advantage. Okay, so what we are saying is that the taxpayer is realized to is, is allowed to realize his capital asset at the best advantage. I'll make an example here. Let's say that uh, you buy a plot of land which is uh, 28 uh, uh, hectares. Okay, and then you use Use this uh, plot of land uh, to build a mansion where you will stay with your family. So you are buying this land as some sort of a capital asset, and then you need uh, only out of these 28 hectares, uh, you 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 then buy. Uh, you want to buy this land from. Uh, 
someone who's selling it and this person is only selling 35 hectares so you can't buy the exact 28 okay so you are forced in some way to buy the 35 hectares the excess land then uh, let's say that later you decide you decide to sell the excess land so when you decide to sell that excess land it doesn't necessarily mean that you are now involved in a profit making scam you are mainly realizing your capital assets at the best advantage therefore the mere decision to sell does not necessarily mean that there has been a change in intention the the the, the, the profit that will arise as a result will still be classified as a capital profit okay now the other case here which i want us to look at is that of our cost versus our levy or that one that deals with uh, basically the, 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 the intention here of the taxpayer here where we are saying that the intention uh, is a very important factor that need to be considered okay so under our court versus our levy we talked about the very important concept uh, that deals with the the, 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 the the dominant intention okay now when we talk about the dominant intention we are saying that it is possible to have mixed intention uh, uh, um, when you are holding an Assets. You can hold an asset that shows some investment uh, intention as well as speculative intention. So when you have such uh, or when you are uh, in, in that position, you need to determine the dominant intention or if it's very difficult to determine such when uh, the asset is then disposed, you will treat the disposal or the receipts that you are getting as the revenue process. Okay, so we are saying that there's two uh, intentions. Some people will hold an, an, an asset uh, as an, an for investment purposes some people will hold an asset for speculative purposes however if there are mixed intentions that are involved then you need to determine what is the dominant intention for that a particular asset that you are holding okay now the other case that i want us to discuss or look at is that case which deals uh, with our pick and pay uh, uh, employee share trust where we are saying that things acquired otherwise out of the profit making scam will be classified as uh, that of our capital uh, uh, okay so we are saying that if if you are not uh, involved in a profit making scam and then you we are basically uh, um, acquiring a particular assets if that asset is then disposed or or those shares if maybe let's say shares you are dealing with here and then they are then disposed they are disposed without any in, uh, intention of uh, speculating so uh, if, 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 if it's out of the context of uh, speculative intention then you will classify those uh, profits uh, as a capital receipt and will not be included in the gross income in that relevant year of assessment okay now the other case which I will also want us to look at uh, or discuss here is that of our Richmond uh, um, and our Richmond here we look at the action taken by the directors and what has been stated under the memorandum of association or the article uh, so you might find that under the memorandum of association it is stated the intention on how the business is being conducted and how are we holding the asset of the business stating that maybe Maybe our intention uh, is that of our investment however when uh, we look closely in terms of the actions of the directors they prove that uh, the directors are actually uh, uh, showing or depicting the intention of our uh, speculative okay so in that uh, situation we are saying that uh, the, 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 the actions of the directors will tell us uh, or will provide the supplementary evidence as to what is the, 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 the intention of the taxpayer uh, or, or of the taxpayer uh, when he is holding a capital asset. Okay. Now, the other case here which we need to look at is that of our John Bell uh, versus our, uh, our, our SARS. And our, under our John Bell, we said that there is something more uh, that is required to uh, change or metamorphose uh, the character of an asset, surrender it, uh, 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 proceed as uh, uh, our 
a growth income okay so there's something more required here uh, it is very important to consider when we are dealing with our John Bell even if the land is subdivided but if there is no uh, or presence of the something more to metamorphose or to change the character of that asset then when that uh, article or the land is sold then it will still be classified as uh, the, the the capital profits and will not be included in the taxpayers growth income okay now what we need to be thinking in line of is what is the something more uh, that is required that will show that there have been a change uh, uh, in intention okay now the case here which uh, then uh, deal with this concept of uh, a change in intention is that of our natal estate uh, versus our cir where uh, the land which was used for farming activities for farming our uh, sugarcane it was subdivided and it was developed into sectionalized units uh, 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 in an extensive uh, development uh, into sectionalized units that were uh, you know sold um, uh, in in a form of uh, uh, you know a profit making scam okay so now the the, the court upheld that uh, the taxpayer is uh, basically allowed to realize a capital asset at the best advantage hence our stock case however the court went on uh, to, to, to 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 further consider there's something more uh, being present here because now the way in which the land was subdivided and sold it showed that the taxpayer had in fact to cross the rubicon and was then involved in some sort of a profit making scam so therefore the manner in which the land was subdivided uh, and sold it showed that the the taxpayer had actually crossed the rubicon or the intention had actually changed from what uh, appeared to be originally a capital asset uh, uh, kept as an, an investment uh, intention uh, to something of a, a speculative nature where basically the the, the, tax, the taxpayer was now motivated by the profit that he was going to generate for some sub, subdividing and and, and developing this land into a sectionalized unit so therefore the profit the, the profit that arose from such a disposal of an article or of land was then classified as uh, our gross income okay so it's very very important here to to to, to note the principles which were established by the court under our nature where we found out that there was a crossing of the rubicon uh, and our, our john ben we saw that there was something more which was required to basically uh, metamorphose or change the character of an asset so render its profits as a gross income and our nature we hear this concept of our crossing of the rubicon where the taxpayer embarked in an extensive uh, um, was in uh, some sort of a profit uh, making was in pursuance of the profit making scam of such okay now the case of nail also uh, you we found that under our nail case the the the, the court held that the may uh, decision to sell does not necessarily mean that uh, uh, there have been a change in intention so we need to look at uh, did uh, actually the profit motivate the the the, 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 the sale or the the may sale resulted in a profit okay so if the profit motivated the sale that will give us an indication that the taxpayer was in a pursuance of a profit making scam therefore so render each prof a profit of that article when it is disposed as the revenue and should be included in gross income however if uh, uh, we, we we basically the selling an article and it may result in profit uh, that is a good thing because the taxpayer is just realizing his capital assets at best advantage so when disposing such an article then the profits are classified as the capital uh, receipt and should not be included in the gross income okay now the other case here which i want us to look at closely uh, which is very very important is the case which dealt with our bria west now bria west it was a company which was formed to facilitate uh, in terms of uh, um, 
disposing the, 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 the land or the, 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 the asset of the deceased estate. Now, under our prayer work, we found that the, 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 the texture was mainly realizing the capital asset at, at the best advantage. There were no crossing of a rubicon of such that we saw under our natal estate. Okay, so in this situation, what we are saying is that the, 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 the profits or the profit that arose from the disposal of the land that was subdivided and sold, uh, they didn't give us an indication that the, 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 the taxpayer was involved in any there was no profit making scam in terms of our Bria West the taxpayer was mainly realizing the capital assets at the best advantage so therefore the prof the profits uh, that arose from such uh, a sale were classified as a capital receipt and hence not included into gross income now uh, there is also another case here which I also want us to, to, to look at, which is our FW for uh, 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 Belanges, where there was uh, contracts uh, that uh, were lost. Uh, uh, on the, 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 the building which was leased by a foray. Okay, so the, the, the two contracts which were lost, a foray then received some sort of a compensation as a result of the contracts that were lost. So there were some, uh, there was a hole in, 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 in the income in which a foray was supposed to receive as a result. However, the, the income earning structure was still intact and, and foray was still able to use uh, the the other section of the building to let to the, 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 the tenant. Therefore, we are saying that uh, the, 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 the capital earning structure was still intact because the tax was still able to use uh, the, the, the capital asset to generate revenue uh, uh, of such. Therefore, the, 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 the compensation that Fori received then was that of a revenue receipt and was supposed to be included in the gross income as a result. Now, when you look at our Stellenbosch case now, uh, there in that situation, the compensation which was received by the taxpayer was for the, the contract which was lost and uh, uh, in that situation they were unable to continue carrying trade. Therefore, uh, a such compensation that they received was that of a capital nature uh, and uh, it was not included in the gross income because they were unable to conduct the business so the 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 the, 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 it, the, the whole which was fed by this competition it was with regard to the the asset the capital asset that they couldn't utilize the due to the contract that was lost okay so you can see here that uh, the our fw uh, for the balances and our sterling bosch case uh, it, uh, there are two different cases that need to be treated very carefully when you are dealing with them okay now, uh, we also need also to discuss our case of our Nussbaum because our case of Nussbaum, it then deals with the, the shares or purchasing shares uh, when basically uh, um, the, 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 for the intention of speculating actually. So when the dividend uh, they fell below the, the, the market related price, uh, you found that the, the, the taxpayer actually disposed uh, those shares uh, to, to, to basically try and realize more profit uh, as possible. So uh, the, 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 the profit that uh, was obtained by the taxpayer from disposing those shares as the, the dividend fell and when the dividend was rising. So there was some speculative uh, intention that were involved under our Nussbaum case. Okay? So what we are saying is that the profit it from such then was uh, classified as uh, the revenue receipt and was included in the taxpayers gross income. Now the other content that I want uh, us to look at is that of our crook rents as well as our cyber currencies. Obviously if you are purchasing a crook rent with an intention to keep it and to hold it and you are not involved in trading the crook rent, let's say that a decision then arrives that you want to dispose a uh, such a crook rent. So if you want to dispose that crook rent, um, the decision to dispose that crook rent, then uh, you can see that you are just mainly realizing your capital assets at the best advantage. So uh, the profit that will arise in that situation, it will be uh, capital in nature and will not be included in gross income. How 
however, if you are buying the poker rent uh, and dealing with them uh, in a manner in which a, a, a person who is dealing with Kruger rent will treat them, uh, so let's say that you decide them to sell. So you are keeping this Kruger rent as some sort of a trading stock. So in, in, when, when you are selling this Kruger rent, the receipt that you will be getting, there will be revenue in nature and hence will be included in your gross income. Okay. Now, uh, we also need to look at the, the, the concept of uh, acquiring the debtors book. So when we acquire a business with the debtors book, uh, and let's say, for example, we acquire a business that have a debtors book of a million, and then uh, normally you, you are skeptical that you collect the consideration of the one million from these debtors of the business that you are you're acquiring, and you decide to pay 800000 So later you find out that uh, when you basically conduct and trade in that business that the customers they actually or the debtors they do pay the full one million which you did not at acquisition uh, anticipated that you would receive the full one million okay so in that situation if you continue conducting a business uh, and you're not immediately disposing uh, uh, that business after acquiring uh, those debtors uh, we will say that such receipt will be uh, uh, recognized as a capital receipt because you are not involved in some sort of a profit-making scam or you're not in pursuit of a profit-making scam. However, if you buy those debtors book with an intention to immediately dispose such uh, at a higher value, then we will consider or we will then say that now uh, in this situation we are involved in some sort of a pursuit of the profit making scam so render the proceed when you are disposing those data as a revenue receipt which is supposedly to be included in the gross income so uh, this is very important when you are looking at our cases that deals with our concept of our revenue versus our capital uh, to take into account that the, the intention which is the it's the exit of the taxpayer it need to be established because certain people they hold the assets for different purposes okay so what we mean by it's the exit we mean that it is what uh, the, 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 the taxpayer says his stated intention is okay so when you look at our section 102 of our cycle legislation you see some guidance factors or it states some of the things that we may look at that will give us an indication uh, with regard to uh, um how we may conclude as to whether uh, when uh, there is some sort of a receipt or an accrual, whether it is of a capital receipt or it is of a revenue receipt. So in, in, in that situation, they are not conclusive uh, factors uh, once again, but they do give us an indication in terms of deciding as to whether when maybe an, an, an article or a land is sold, uh, its profit will be treated as that of our our capital receipt or, or, or of that of our revenue receipt okay now there is a case here which uh, we did not discuss which um, i want to close with which is very very important to take into consideration and uh, uh, to be careful of uh, which is our ellen show uh, case where uh, the, there was uh, some sort of a change in the shareholding. So the original shareholders, uh, their intention was that of uh, our investment purposes, whereas the new shareholders, they had the intention of our speculation, our speculative uh, intention. So the, the, the change in shareholders indicated that there was a change in intention because the, 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 the shareholders, the original shareholders, they had an intention uh, of, 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 of basically dealing with land uh, for, for or keeping it as an investment or as, as some sort of a capital asset that is kept for generating revenue. Whereas the new shareholders, they had an intention of uh, basically subdividing and selling at a, a, a profit. So they were motivated uh, by a profit, okay, as opposed to the original. Uh, um, 
uh, principal owners which were holding uh, the, 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 the land as a capital asset to use it to produce a, a, a revenue. So you can see here that the change in shareholding then uh, uh, gave rise to this change in them in an intention. Okay, so it's very important once again to know what each specific case deals with and the principle which was uh, 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 um, held by the court or what principle was established by the, the court. So these are various tests uh, that the court put into uh, consideration under uh, these cases that I've discussed. They, it's very important to know what each uh, uh, conclusion which was drawn by the court in each of the specific cases. Okay. Once again, uh, it's very important to go through these videos at one or two times so that the concept does uh, sink, in, uh, sink in. And I hope that they, they are a very important concept and they try to summarize uh, everything that is very important for you uh, to, 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 to help you in terms of uh, studying for your test. Okay? And up until the next time, I thank you.